Me host your channel. Twitch.tv slash trade chat. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah, all right. Uh, are you tweeting it? I'll uh, retweet I you. should. I mean, a good person at work would do that. <laughs> Wait, I'll take a screenshot of us. Look cute in the camera. Oh, oh, well, that's not right now. Happen. Right now, do it. Okay, we should be cute. <laughs> should be. Should be. I probably got the crazy eyes going. <laughs> you always do crazy. Oh I no, you're. Do. I actually feel like you would. Here, do you want to see it? Do you approve of that? You're actually very cute. I approve. It looks like a cheap picture that she would take of herself. <laughs> the eyes are a little crazy, but I approve. Like, let's they... be honest. You have a tiny touch of crazy eye in every picture <laughs> you take. You can't help it. It's because you have beautiful anime eyes. Oh, God, you're so sweet. You're so sweet. You, <clears throat> you shut your mouth. <laughs> you shut your whole mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. Don't hate me. I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with me either. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> so I learned recently about this thing called mukbang. Mukbang? Do, do you know what mukbang is? No. So mukbang is super popular in Korea. It's a mashup of the Korean words for eat and broadcast, muk and bang. Um, and it's literally people that stream them eating tons of food like three dozen donuts or like two buckets of kfc chicken or like giant oh. bowls of ramen and oh. so like i'm clearly in the wrong profession first and foremost <laughs> and second it's funny because i i talk about this all the time like i talk about how i missed my calling and like i talked about it on twitter and now every time i eat on stream everybody freaks out and they're like mukbang hype mukbang hype <laughs> which makes me feel really really good on the inside live meow oh. That is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Why are we both not doing that? I, I know. Feel like that would be. <laughs> yeah. So like in, in Korea, in South Korea, they have a different service that they use to stream if they don't use Twitch. Well, some of them use Twitch if they're broadcasting specifically to like an American audience. But mm -hmm. within within the Korean community, they, they use a program called Africa, which is sort of mm -hmm. like a mix of YouTube and Twitch. And it has different categories. And the categories are literally like. Gaming, StarCraft, mukbang. <laughs> like, it's like a big thing. It's like a huge thing. And I feel like what an opportunity I'm missing right now. Like, why not? Right. Why am I not doing this? In the United States. I know. We're, should we should just do that. Like, that's pretty much what we do on a normal day-to-day -day basis anyways. Mm -hmm. Why not just make a living out of it? Am I right? All right. We let me pull up show notes. Hi, chat. I just popped oh, are we out already chat. live? Oh, we're live. <laughs> we're live, baby. We're live. Um, mm -hmm. Hi, chat. I'm sorry that I st I like popped out my chat and I lost everything that everybody was saying. But anyways, uh, where I was going with that is I'm currently eating. <laughs> <laughs> Mukbang hype. Uh, because I will be eating this whole stream because I'm starving. Which we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but... So remember how I told you that I had, um, <laughs> I was going to get tested for ADHD? Yeah. Well, life update, I have hilariously bad ADHD. So I'm on, <laughs> I'm on Adderall now, Adderall XR. And my dose they gave me at first wasn't high enough, so they doubled it. But one of the symptoms, like one of the side effects of being on Adderall is that food isn't like, it's not that you're not hungry, you just don't think about it the way you do normally. Okay. So I try to remind myself to eat because I still love food and I don't want to neglect it. But then yeah. when I do eat, it's like I'm so hungry because I used to be the type of person that was kind of always snacking and now I'm kind of eating like, I don't know, Large healthy balanced meals mm -hmm. <laughs> instead of just like eating Cheetos all day. So it's like all of a sudden I'll realize I'm hungry and I need to eat like right then, like right that second it needs to happen. So that's what's going right on in my life right now. It's really good. It's really me. interesting because you've always, like, for as long as I've known you, you've always ate, like, very small portions. Yeah. But, at a, like, throughout the entire day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so Accurate. how are you taking to that change then? Do you like it more or is it just weird? So when I was on um, 10, I, they started me out on Adderall XR 10 milligrams. Mm -hmm. And I, like, didn't notice the difference at all. Like, at all. I just didn't want to take it. Like, if I, if I wasn't going to notice any difference at all, I didn't want to take it. 
And today yeah. they bumped my dose up to 20. And I would say I definitely noticed a difference today. And I feel like I've been much more conscious in conversations of like mm-hmm. reading every word. I know that sounds really dumb, but it was a huge problem I had. I would like skim over things and not understand fully what people were saying because I didn't fucking take the time to read it. And like, hopefully people will notice today that I'm a little better about not interrupting because the way that my doctor described the, what this medication does is that um, people who have ADHD, are you guys, is the stream, is the stream like lagging for you guys? I keep getting a notice that dropped frames are being detected, but I don't Uh-oh. really know why that is. The last time this happened, it was because I had too many things running simultaneously, but I don't have anything going on right now. So I don't really mm-hmm. see like why that would. I'll go to the stream and see if. Yeah, let me know. If anything is happening. Thanks. So how did your uh, doctor describe it? So he said that basically when people have ADHD, what it means is that like usually one part of their brain is like really, really, really fast, like, ah, and then like other parts literally can't keep up. Um, mm-hmm. And it was funny because he did all these tests and he, he kept just saying like, you know, you're like really, really, really smart. But anytime like I have I give you verbal instructions, you listen to about half of what I say <laughs> and then just fill in the gaps the best you can. <laughs> um, and I, I mean, I'll talk a little more about the testing later because that was in and of itself was a very interesting process. But mm. he did all I mean, there was like four hours of testing, written testing. Wow. Tests where I had to, like, copy pictures and not pick my pencil up. Tests that were verbal. Tests that were, like, my audio sensory stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, he rated everything. And on one of the scales, the Amen ADHD scale, this is my favorite thing, um, a person who does not have ADHD would score a zero on that test. Okay. And a person who has significant uh, ADHD that a doctor would 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 suggest they go on some sort of medication would score a 20. Okay. I scored a 41. <laughs> <laughs> so where does that even put you on the scale? Way up <laughs> there. Way, way what? up there. He said... Did they even have a name for it? No. Danielle, apparently. He said, um... <laughs> I did a bunch of other tests, and they were they were scored um, like a hundred would be the average person my age. That would be the average score, and like one of the scores was uh, data data processing. So essentially, like the RAM in your brain, and I scored in like the ninety nine point nine 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 percent of like data processing. But then like my auditory listening skills, I was in like. Very low, like very Aww. fucking low, like like at the rate of like a nine year old, like so bad, <laughs> so bad. And uh, I don't know. I no, I know. I know a lot of people aren't like super pro like doctors and medications. And like I think there's a lot of situations where little kids in particular are medicated when they really just need an outlet for their energy. Yeah. But um, yeah. as someone who like I have good coping skills for someone with like ADHD like I did excellent in school I'm very competitive Mm -hmm. if I have a motivation for doing something I will fucking get it done you can ask Sarah like I have oh yes like crazy work ethic to the point where it's obnoxious to be around me because like I will just work until I fall apart like I just don't get anything done in my life organized too (laughs) well I have to be well that's the thing that is a side effect of having ADHD because if I don't write everything down I won't remember it Mm-hmm. Like, numbers mean nothing to me. If I don't write them down, a 20 is a 2 and a 12 is a 14. <laughs> like, nothing means shit to me if I don't write it down. So, like... Numbers don't mean the things unless they're written down. Yeah, so it's like I noticed that once I did start on the proper dose of medication, like, I am significantly more patient. And mm-hmm. I feel like the work that I'm getting done, I'm getting done more efficiently and with less mistakes I also have noticed that I've been better about not losing my train of thought, which is a huge, I mean, you know, <laughs> I'll be midway. <laughs> How do we even get to this topic? <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's a common thing that Sarah and I say. So I feel like it's really been very helpful and I haven't noticed any terrible side effects. Although he did say the majority of the side effects from being on something like Adderall is Um, headaches which is actually because it dehydrates you so as long as you're drinking enough water you won't really notice it and since I got LASIK in my eyeballs I've been very conscious about drinking enough water because it reduces the amount of eye drops I need so 
So you haven't really felt the headaches, thankfully? No, no, I haven't That's had awesome. any headaches or anything. I've I've actually, like I said, I've only been on the proper dose for like a day, but like I mm-hmm. noticed a huge difference when I was getting work done today of like just being able to like stay on task and being able to multitask more efficiently because I'm like the queen of getting 35,000 things 80% done. (laughs) Whereas today I felt like I was really able to like get several things done. Uh, Granted, my internet in Sony Vegas didn't cooperate with me once that happened, but we should get into the show and stop talking about my brain. But I like talking about your brain. We'll talk about my brain later. Don't you worry. (laughs) Don't you worry. You're looking very lovely today, Chief. Has anyone told you that? No, thank oh, you, girl. Oh, you look super pretty, and I love it's your shirt. So it's very cute with the cutouts she's, in the shoulders. <laughs> she's so sweet. Are you going to name your baby Danielle? I mean, I'm not kissing ass for any reason. <laughs> but. Uh, I promised Joel that he was allowed to name oh, the I baby. I hope he names her Fiona. So. I, like, I, I, I need you to know I'm 100% on Team Fiona. <laughs> Guys, Fiona do you is such love a pretty the name. name Fiona? Because a long time ago, I told Sarah that... On the crazy off chance that hell froze over and I had a child and that child was a girl, that I would name her Fiona because I think that's, like, such a gorgeous classic name and, like, it's not super common, but it's also not like you're naming your child, like, Banana Nut Muffin. Yeah. (laughs) You know, it's like, I think it's such a nice name. And her response was... Oh, that's Joel's favorite girl's name, too. Like, he's always wanted a daughter named Fiona. So now I am 100% on Team Fiona. I want your daughter to be named Fiona so bad. Like, Fiona, like, Fiona Isabel. Yeah, Fee would be such a cute shortener. It would be such a cute shortener, too. I think he's tossing around a few names. Just, like, whisper Fiona a lot. Tell him that I said Fiona is the best name. (laughs) It's the best out of all of them. I promise. Okay, Okay, so anyways, for all of you guys who are just joining us, we were trying to waste a little time while people filtered in. Uh, If you aren't familiar, Derpcast is a monthly podcast where we discover, discovered, where we discuss everything that mattered to us in the past month, including movies, games, TV, current events, our day-to-day life, absolutely anything is game. Uh, Today's Derpcast is also going to be for charity. I didn't open my stream board, I apologize, but um, after... After this, uh, Chiba and I will make sure that we give our appropriate thank yous to anybody who donates to either of our links. We are on the same team, and the money is going to the same place. Mm -hmm. I do not care who you donate to. You could go donate to DM Brandon's trade trade chat, (laughs) Sid Play Live link, (laughs) if you wanted to, and that would be fine with me. I just really, like, it's a cause that we both support wholeheartedly and Mm -hmm. would Mm -hmm. fully encourage anyone that was interested in donating to St. Jude, and we'll talk a little bit about that in uh in a little while but derpcast usually runs about an hour and a half two hours so get comfy because we're gonna be here for a little while and uh in the future we might do these more often certainly not this month because this month is crazy yes but so uh, so starting it off how have you been Cheeb? how is life how is life treating you how how is life yeah well if y'all don't know I am pregnant, and I have less than a month left until the baby is born. So that's super exciting. Hopefully she's going to, you know, come at the correct time. Listen, you're (laughs) already doing good. Your doctor, last time we talked, your doctor thought she was coming out any day. So she's hanging out. She's setting up camp. She's hanging out in there. Though Mm -hmm. I am a little concerned because I did go to the doctor today, and she said it was measuring smaller than what I should be and also I lost some weight so I'm not trying to lose weight I eat all the time food is delicious surprised I'm not eating right now (laughs) but That's, that's like not a huge deal though like everything else was normal right yeah, everything else was normal. So. I had a friend who lost, like, 25 pounds while she was pregnant. I'm not kidding. And what? she was not that big of a girl beforehand. Like, she wasn't skinny mini, but she wasn't, like, obese or anything like that. And she lost weight during her pregnancy, and her baby's mm. fine. Okay. <laughs> He's a little chunker. <laughs> oh. I just sucked a couscous up my nose. Couscous? I've never actually tried couscous before. Do you hate me for it's that? It's like round pasta balls. You would like it. Brown See? pasta balls. <laughs> See how it's like pasta but balls? Oh, it looks mm-hmm. tasty. Like it. This is bigger couscous because it's Israeli, but it gets really, really tiny. Which, like, a third of the size of rice. But, anywho, 
we have St. Jude play live this month, and it's very exciting. The event started on April 29th, and it's going until May 31st. We are both on Team Derp Squad. Yeah. And the goal for Team Derp Squad this month is uh, $50,000, and I think we can do it. I think we can. I think we can do it. And anyone can join. So if anyone out there is a streamer and would like to join our team, Derp, Derp Squad, please feel free to do so. You can go to uh, uh, playlife.stjude.org slash <laughs> Derp Squad, and you can sign up for free. If you are a student and you need community service hours for school, every $100 that you raise counts as 10 service hours. What? And I am also making the first $5 donation to... At least 50 people on the team. So I'm doing my best. I provided some overlays that I made for people. And mm -hmm. I'm really trying to help support the team and, you know, retweet when people are streaming and stuff like that. So I think it's been going pretty well. Um, if you are interested in making a donation, you can do so at either mine or Cheeb's link. Mine is underneath this stream. Cheeb's, it's if you go to I am Cheeb, she's got one under hers. What is it? Playlive.stjude.com slash Cheeb. Dot org uh, slash cheap. I, I think it's I am Is cheap. it I am cheap? So if you want to Thank make goodness. one to to, to Cheeb's St. Jude page, it's playlive.stjude.org slash I am cheap. Um, she is at what, $3,200 already? Yes, I could not. Doing. And I've only fundraised for two days. So I'm so excited. That's crazy. That what kind of stuff are you doing? <laughs> to like. <laughs> Uh, pretty much things that are ways to torture me. <laughs> Excellent. Me as well. Um, I threw up on stream already. Yeah, I will not do that. Those, uh... Don't do it. Bird spots, beans. And I told Joel I wasn't going to do it because, uh, Alicia actually wrote me and was like, don't do that challenge. <laughs> I sent you the beans. Danielle threw up. Don't do it. And I told Joel, you know, I'm just not going to do it because I don't want to throw up. I'm the type of person that if I throw up, I'll just keep throwing mm -hmm. up. So Once I like, started nah. gagging, I knew I would throw up. Like, there was just no <laughs> way. I have such a weak stomach. Uh, he's a good sport. So we put it at our $4,000 mark. You're smart. I did it 500 Why did I do that? Why right. did I do that? <laughs> You probably did it on the first day then, didn't I did. you? <laughs> I did. Um, but yeah, I'm doing all kinds of crazy things. Like, I've smashed eggs on my head already. I've had, like, pies to the face already. Did you see <laughs> so... my pie to the face? It was so brutal. No! Oh, I my didn't. God. It was I so I saw brutal. Nick's. <laughs> Nick's was nothing compared to mine. <laughs> so what kind of pies are, are they, like, legit pies? No, we, well, I made, like, the whipped cream. Like, it was, mm -hmm. like, a pie crust with, like, all whipped cream in it. And then you have to let it sit outside of the fridge for, like, a half an hour so that it gets all liquidy. Oh. Ooh, are we losing oh. you? Chibi there? Okay, wait, wait. Chibi, move your arms. Move your legs. Mm -hmm. There you are. Okay, you're here. You froze for a second. <laughs> Uh-oh. You froze for a second. Thank you for subscribing. You do not have to do that. Um... Yeah, so we just did whipped cream pies, and they were very messy and embarrassing, but fun, for sure. So how did you guys keep that off of your floor? Because it was I on the floor. It was on the it floor? It did get on the floor. <laughs> it went fucking everywhere. It was all over my chair. It was on my keyboard. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. No, it went everywhere. And, like, it was so, like, all over my face. And then it just, like, glopped onto my boobs. And then it, like, <laughs> glopped off of my boobs. And it was, like, down my shirt. And, like, it was Whatever. brutal. Whatever you do, don't do eggs. Because I was trying I was trying to do eggs. I made it where uh, it was an incentive. So if anybody donated $80 or more through me, they would get, like, their name written on an egg. And I would smash it on myself. Eggs go everywhere. <laughs> Absolutely everywhere. It got all over the place. I couldn't do that at $80. Apparently, a bunch of my viewers must have won the lottery or something. Because I've had, <laughs> like, my average donation is, like, $100. What? That's awesome. I have no idea. I have no idea. Everybody's, like, crazy and rich. But <laughs> So if I did that, I would just be running out of eggs. Like, it would be like a chicken massacre. <laughs> the vegans would be calling for my head. <laughs> Where did all the chickens in the world go? <laughs> um, yeah, so we're at like a little, my, uh, my audience is at a little over 10,000 right now. That's awesome. I have no idea how that, I'm in complete like disbelief about it because last year, I think I did, something I just ate was very spicy. Uh oh! <laughs> Last year, I uh, I think we did 22 for the whole event for the whole month. 
Wow. So, like, I have no clue how in the world we're at 10,000 already. I just don't. I'm a, I'm in complete like shock and I'm so grateful and I'm so humbled honestly by the fact that people would like take their time out to like hang out and like donate money to such a good cause and I I don't even know. I'm very impressed with my audience and I I'm I'm very humbled by the whole thing. Uh but because we hit 10,000, we're doing prank phone calls on stream tomorrow. Oh goodness. I know. I like have been uh cuz I got a new phone a while ago and I realized how many contacts I didn't like switch over. So I've been like oh. very innocently like DMing people and being like, "Hi, I need your number for no reason." <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, if you just happen to call me at some point, <laughs> should I just not pick up the phone? No, you absolutely <laughs> should pick up the phone, except it wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't listen. It's going to be good. It's, it's going to be, be good. really good. Trust me, you won't even know. Like, I don't think you'll know. Even if I told you right now, like, I'm going to prank phone call you tomorrow, I'm pretty sure I could get you so good and you wouldn't even know it was me. You probably would. <laughs> you probably would. Mm -hmm. It'd be like a secret ninja attack. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I'm going to call YouTubers and Sam calling from the IRS. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's all of our worst nightmares. It's all of our worst nightmares. That's actually hilarious right now because I owe the IRS $925 oh no. from like 2014. Oh no. So I feel like, what? <laughs> but uh, I've talked to you about this already. Yeah, I'm actually squared away with the IRS because I was incredibly responsible with my money this year. I literally saved like a lot of money and then Nick had extra money taken out of his paycheck. So when it was time to do taxes, we actually had extra money left over, which was baffling so we paid That's off awesome. um, we paid off like a we financed our hot tub so we used the rest oh. of the money to pay that off yeah oh, oh. listen that was the only thing I like feel like when I feel like when I say things about my life it comes across as being very privileged and pretentious but like I swear to god guys I really don't buy anything like I don't like I spend my money on very like first world things but I don't buy like I can't remember the last time I like bought a clothes yeah. like you know what I mean like I don't I don't remember the last time I was just like I'm gonna go shopping and like buy a bunch of shit like I'm not like I know I did buy a hot tub when I moved here but for the record the hot tub increased the value of my house because it's installed mm -hmm. into the house so like that was an investment and because we paid it off we didn't pay any interest on it either so I feel like that's okay yeah, and I also, awesome. like, spend my money on a housekeeper who comes every two weeks. And let me tell you, I would give up some serious shit to never have to clean the things that she cleans. <laughs> like, I only pay her $50 every two weeks. And she does my bathrooms, my kitchen. She does. She sweeps. What? She mops. Right? And it's not under the table. Like, it's a cleaning service that I pay them with a check to their cleaning service. Like, it's not even, like, this is an illegal situation. Like, she just hustles or something. I don't know. But, like... I don't want to, right? Like, I'll give up going out to eat once a week to have a housekeeper come. Like, that's fantastic. Please clean my toilets. I didn't realize that was so cheap. Okay, so someone just said, she says in front of her horde of stuffed animals, the majority of this stuff I did not pay for. And I'm not bragging <laughs> when I say that, but, like, people send me stuff. Companies send me stuff. Like, the majority of the things that I have... I didn't pay for it, and then I feel guilty getting rid of anything. I've had conversations with Cheeb about this before. Yeah. About, like, I have too much shit. I don't know what to do with it. I can't get rid of it because it was a gift that someone gave me. Yeah. Do you remember, And like, also, Loot Crate. You get a lot of stuff from Loot Crate yeah. as well because you're um, sponsored with them. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're spending money on that type of stuff. No, making it's money just on given. it. That's, yeah. I would buy Loot If I was not affiliated with Loot Crate, I would still buy Loot Crate, though. That shit is a good deal. This month, did you open this month's crate? Yes. What girl. the hell? It was so good. The t shirt so was good. so good. The yes. drinking horn was so good. The socks were so good. The freaking pin was awesome this month, too. The ice cube thing, fucking yes. everything was awesome. Everything was awesome. awesome. And like that's I so it's not like it's something that I would I would definitely be buying that if I didn't if I wasn't sponsored by them and I'm happy to like suggest them to people because they do a lot of awesome stuff for the community and then you get like way more than what you pay for. Yeah. Since we're on the topic I, of loot crate, I am donating 100% of my loot crate commission through uh May 19th to which is St. June. Awesome. Yeah, well I'm hoping that we do really well this month because it's a Warcraft month. 
Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of my audience obviously likes Warcraft. So it's like, it's $20. And if you're in the U.S., that includes shipping. And of that 20 I think my kickback is like 8 bucks. So 8 bucks of that is going to go to St. Jude. So you're really only going to pay $12, including shipping. And you can always cancel under that month. I mean, I'm not, I shouldn't be promoting something like that, but it's for charity. Like, if you're only doing it for charity, just cancel afterwards. Like, it's you can do it right online. I did it. Also, <laughs> uh, it's it's really, like, if you're in the United States, 20 bucks for for that crate every month, you, well, get, you get a shirt a every, every single month. month. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, the shirt alone, I think, is worth it because they usually have a really – a uh, nice quality of shirt in there and it's nerdy and just cool so yeah it's like why leave the house and go shopping when you can just well, have and a I shirt think some of it you. some of it the fact that it's a surprise is really fun too like yeah. i know a lot of people like oh i would rather spend that 20 dollars on things i definitely want and i understand and respect that as mm -hmm. well but like you're gonna get more and i feel like the surprise of it like makes it more exciting and like it makes it more meaningful like i'm not like yes yeah, some things are hit or miss i'm not saying i love every single thing in every yeah. single crate like there's very rarely do i dislike something i think the last thing i straight up disliked was in the fantasy crate from april 2015 <laughs> there was an inflatable crown and i was like this is dumb and there was another month that they sent Ninja Turtle sunglasses. And I thought that was... Um, I don't really like the filler items, but yeah. like I feel like they've gotten that kind of feedback because there hasn't been a filler item in a really long time. Yeah. And if it is a filler item, it's like a poster, not something that's like a thing. What am I ever... Yeah, what am you I ever going mean? to use this? Uh, my code for Loot Crate is Trade Chat. It's lootcrate.com slash Trade Chat. And I believe there's a link in my Twitch description. But like I said... Um, as long as you sign up on or before May 19th, all of my commission is going to uh, St. Jude. Last year, that raised $900. That's Last year, awesome. we sold enough crates to raise $900 for St. Jude. So that's a really cool way that you can help out, and you're going to get, like, tons of stuff, and it's going to help people, and it's loot. And there's a Warcraft item this month, so oh, I'm just like, not yeah. seeing a lose in this situation at all. Excuse me while I take a sip of my milk. Mmm, milk. Mm -hmm. Um, what else before we move on from St. Jude? I also have a sponsored video coming up that is not normally uh, within my wheelhouse of things I would put on my channel, but okay. it's with uh, Mega Blocks. I don't know if you've heard of Mega Blocks, mm -hmm. but it's with Mega Blocks. And I normally wouldn't really put something like that on my channel, but I asked them specifically if I would be allowed to donate that money because sometimes mm -hmm. like companies won't let you do that because of the affiliation and they don't want to like. There can be legal things if you like. Yeah. So I asked them, and I I got the I got the okay. So I am doing a sponsored video this month for these really cool Mega Blocks figures, That's and awesome. um, I will be donating 100% of the sponsorship to uh, St. Jude as well, which I believe is $1,500. What? So, That's amazing, yeah. boo. So we, I'm hoping I'm hoping that between the two fifty that's coming out of my pocket, the fifteen hundred from that, and the loot crate, I'm really, really hoping that three grand will that would be the total of all of that. That would make me feel quite good, uh, or at least twenty five hundred because that would be ten yeah. percent of what I was uh, goaling to get. But anyways, Saint Jude is awesome, and you should donate to them because they're really fantastic, and it's. I mean, like, yes, of course, you're helping the kids that are currently in treatment, which Sarah and I have both met the kids and yeah. seen the facilities. And it's a very, it's a really inspiring place to be. And uh, I mean, mm -hmm. of course, like no family at St. Jude ever receives a bill. And that includes for mm -hmm. travel, housing, medical bills, absolutely anything they need. But I think more importantly, a huge portion of your money is going to research. And yeah. the research at St. Jude is... There's no way to put a value on the the work that they've done. Um, the, the year that St. Jude opened in 1962, the overall rate for survival for childhood cancer was one in five, 20 percent. And wow. uh, today, that number is over 80 percent, which is four in five. And they have vowed that by 2020, which is only four years away, they would like to bring that number to 90 percent. And uh, the number that's my favorite number is that the most common childhood cancer is called acute lymphoblastic leukemia or ALL mm -hmm. and in 1962 the survival rate for ALL was 4 percent 96 out of 100 kids with ALL 96. didn't make it that's and amazing to today that number is 94 percent 94 percent of kids with ALL make it because that of is... the work at St. Jude so I know so, like go ahead I'm sorry uh, so they uh, brought it up 90 percent yeah Wow, that's the, amazing. The survival rate went from 4% to 94%. 
in like less than 50 years, which is insane. And uh, that's the kind of impact that donating to St. Jude can have. And the thing that I've been telling a lot of people is that, you know, a lot of people feel like, oh, well, I can only donate $5. Like, that's not mm. really worth it. I shouldn't do it. But if a thousand people have that same thought and don't make that $5 donation, that's $5,000 that could have been donated to St. Jude, which pays for an entire day of outpatient treatment. Yeah. So it adds up so quickly and it's so important. And the things that you're paying for are so, so important. Sarah's stuck in her hair currently. I am. It's <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you get super long hair. But it's, <clears throat> it's, um, it's amazing. We should probably also note that none of the money goes through our hands Yes, whatsoever. we don't touch it. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, <clears throat> that's a really good point. When you do donate to St. Jude through the Play Live event, you're donating to playlive.stjude.org. That money is going. You'll get an email from a company called Allsack, which is the American, Lebanese and Syrian Association for Contribution. Oh, God, that's probably not the right uh, <laughs> thing. But it's actually a, a company that uh, was founded mm -hmm. by the same uh, person that founded St. Jude because he was, uh, uh, his parents were actually, he was Lebanese and his parents were Syrian refugees, or believe it or not, into the U.S. in the 30s. And uh, so when he founded this, it was founded, you know, with his family and in his yeah. heritage in mind. And uh, so when you donate, you won't get an email from us. You'll get an email from, like, you have authorized a payment to Allsack, which is the fundraising company that fundraises mm -hmm. for St. Jude. So the money goes directly to St. Jude. You will also get a piece of paper in the mail confirming your donation to St. Jude, which can be used for tax purposes. Or if you have an employer that matches charitable giving, uh, you can turn that into your employer and your donation will be doubled. So that's not going to us cheap, and I make zero dollars during this yep. event, which is how it should be. <laughs> it's absolutely how it should be. So uh, don't ever feel like we're pulling your leg. American yeah. Lebanese Syrian Associated Charities. I tried, Delaney. I tried, but thank you for looking that up for me. I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, so that will never be money that we touch. It'll be... Yeah it will go right to St. Jude. And we have, like, it's cool. They started a program this year called a Stream Board that allows you to have the pop-ups. Have you been using it? Yeah. I've been using it, although I don't have it on right now because I don't <laughs> think about things ahead of time. I'll have to turn it on before my raid. But it's really nice so that we can have the pop-ups when people donate, which it's not on right now, so I'm sorry if you've made a donation in the last five <laughs> minutes because I don't have it on. But uh, I, I can't say enough good things about St. Jude. Uh, oh, no, wait, what? No. Do you, do you think we're late teens? No, Sarah and I are almost 30. Like, yeah, Sarah, we're Sarah, old. Sarah and I are almost 30. We just look really young. <coughs> uh, it's because we don't go outside very it's, yeah, often. Yeah, I gotta stay pale. Stay pale. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for signing up for Loot Crate this month because that will totally go to St. Jude and that's super great. Um, and like I said, we're doing prank calls, but we've done a bunch of cool things we did. I did a shot of hot sauce. I did the Bernie Beans the Bernie Bots Beans. I got pied in the face. I did stream karaoke. We also did stream movie night. I don't know if you saw that, but that was super cool. We used this uh, program called Showgoers. Okay. And anybody with a Netflix account, I could give them my link and then I controlled the play button and then there was a chat on the side. So what? we all watched. Yeah, it was really cool. We all watched a movie together and I'm going to do another one uh, when when the month is getting a little like later in the month because I feel like a lot of people didn't get to come to this one that wanted to. But we, we watched The Princess Bride, which I had never seen before. Oh, what? That movie is amazing. Yeah, was it really? I'd never seen it. It was my first time seeing it. I really liked yeah. it. And everybody had a lot of fun. Like the people... Oh, excuse me. I just burped. The people who showed up in the movie said it was like a really, really good time. So... Yeah. I want to come to the next one. Yeah, I don't know what we're going to watch. I kind of, like, I, I'm trying to keep all the movies, like, very PG because I don't want to, like, it's like they're watching my reactions because I left my stream on just muted so that there was no sound from the movies. They could just hear me and they could see my face but not see the movie at all because you'll get banned. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> and I was, like, so concerned that, like, I would pick a movie that had, like, a sex scene and then, like, people would be, like, <laughs> awkwardly looking at my face for some sort of reaction. And, like, so I made sure to keep the movies very, very child appropriate. So the options were Princess Bride, Galaxy Quest, uh, Minions, or Home. That is awesome. So I think we're going to do another one at the end of the month. You should come. Definitely. I want to come. Yay. Yeah, so that's <clears throat> movie stuff. I wanted to talk about Game of Thrones, but Sarah is not caught up, which is 
shocking. <laughs> I don't even know, like, what to say to you about this. Like, you need to do that. You're going to get it spoiled for you if you don't watch it. Like, immediately. I'm going to watch it, like, immediately after okay. the stream. Okay, good. That's really good. You're making good choices right now because it's so, it's so, so many things happened. So many it's, incredibly important things happened. And if so. Morgan is here. Please. Thank, huge shout out to her. Thank you so much for letting me watch it because I don't have HBO. <laughs> is my internet going crazy or your internet? Shake your body. Shake your body. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Okay. Oh, um, no. It's really bad. Hang on. Hang on. I'm going to restart our call and see if that helps. Okay. Let me just... Uh, let me just put this here so that people can't see your face while we fix this. All right, everybody, hang on a second. Hang on a second. All right, turn your video back on. Except. Oh, it's loading. Uh -oh. It's loading mighty slow. What's going on? Oh, my God, why is that? It's so bad. No, no, that's not okay. Like, that's not... Speedtest.net. What's happening? You look like a potato. I'm a potato. You look like a real potato. You sound also like a potato. Surprise. I'm not human. I'm a potato. It's real. You sound <laughs> awful. You sound so, so bad. All right. Hang on. I will, I will call you back. Hold on, everybody. Enhancing. 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 It's not my internet confirmed. My internet's f going real fast right now for not having... For not having, a uh, fiber. Cheap has fiber. Now I'm real confused. This is a Skype problem. I'm sure this is a Skype problem. Hello? Oh my god. Talk again. How do you sound? Hello. Right, you sound you, you sound doing? good. I checked my speed. Okay. It's not me. It says there's a problem with the internet connection between you two. Like it says that. Okay. But it's not my internet. I did a speed test. I'm checking mine right now. I'll tell you what it is. Oh no. Oh no. Mine is mm. sitting at Oh it's you are so potatoey right now. Eighty five. Like, I know your internet's good. All right, let's both close Skype and come back. Okay. Like, completely exit Skype and come back. Close. And cl don't worry, guys. We're just having some technical difficulties. We'll deal with it. We'll get it dealt with. It'll be fine. Can't you tell? Can't you just tell by the trust in my voice? It's not my internet. I don't know what's happening. All right. What about now? <laughs> okay. All right. We're good now. We're good. We're good. All right. All right. Let me take this off of your face. Cheap's back. We're back. I don't oh, know if it yeah. was... I saw that the stream froze, but it was Twitch's end because if you refreshed it, it came back. I apologize. We were talking about things, and then we were rudely interrupted. So Anyways, rude. Chief hasn't seen Game of Thrones. I know. Everybody can hate me in the chat. Okay. Well, no, don't. Every, <laughs> nobody talk about it, because I don't want to, like, encourage spoilers, because it was a really good episode, and a lot of stuff happened. It wasn't like, like, there was, like, literally five giant things that happened. <sighs> oh, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> what has been going on in your gaming world? Okay, in my gaming world, let's see. Um, I have been playing a bit of Dark Souls 3, mm -hmm. which is very rage-inducing. Have you tried that? No. Very I try not to play games that make my blood pressure go up. Then don't try that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I hit a milestone. I have, like, vowed to not do extremes in Final Fantasy 14, which are, like... 
these uh, boss fights that are very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, since we raised so much money in St. Jude, now mm -hmm. it was one of my milestones. Now I'm going to have to do it. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm super nervous about that. But I'm going to be doing Final Fantasy XIV Extremes. Probably going to die a ton. And last but not least, I've uh, actually got back into Viva Pinata. Have you ever played that before? Um... Like, no, and I'm trying not to make fun of you right now. I'm, I did, okay, listen, guys. <laughs> if you don't know, I have an 18-month-old daughter, okay? Viva Pinata is, like, an older game on the Xbox that, uh... It should be can, bundled with Xbox, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. And, um, you, you, like, build your own garden, and you can attract these pinata animals, and she's absolutely obsessed with it. So, it's really difficult when you have a young child, because I can't play Dark Souls in front of my kid, you know? I can't play Call of Duty in front of my kid. There's so many mature games that I can't play that I have to find games like Viva Pinata to play, but she absolutely loves it, so <laughs> we've been having a good time with it. <laughs> What about you, Boo? I can't believe you just blamed the baby for your Viva Pinata obsession. You know why? Because <laughs> you said the me. words getting back into, which would imply that you okay. used to be in it previously. I have played it before. Oh. I played it when it first came out, oh. both of them, because there's two of them. So this mm. is true. You're right. I did. But I got back into it oh. for her, Danielle. Oh. It was for her. Oh. <laughs> oh, she capped me. I mean, I mean, my guild, we're still 11 out of 13 mythic. So that's going good. We have officially stopped farming. Our lockout is extended in, until we kill Archimond. Um, which, if you're interested, I will be streaming our progression tonight. I'm sure it will oh, be painful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it's going to feel very bad, man. Uh, but we will we'll, uh, keep on trucking. Uh, I feel like we're doing all right. I actually feel like Manoroth was not as difficult as I anticipated it being, but we'll see. <laughs> we only got to, like, almost phase three. Phase three starts at, like, what, 60%? Anyways, oh, boo, you don't know the answer guess. to that question. <laughs> uh, I've also been playing Diablo Season 6, like, fairly obsessively. Um, yes, I was watching you yeah. uh, play on stream. Oh, thanks. I uh, I am playing a... There has been a fuzz on my ceiling for days, like probably weeks, that like every once in a while it catches my eye and I do the whole, is it a spider or is it a fuzz? Oh, gosh. It's either a long dead spider or it's a fuzz, but every once in a while it catches my eye and then I never think about it by the time I'm up and around again. You know what I mean? I forget about it. Oh, goodness. Anywho, so I'm I've been so playing Diablo and I'm playing a demon hunter that is wearing the, uh... Binary, what's what set am I wearing? I see you in chat. Binary, binary, what set am I wearing? <laughs> it's the it's the it's the welfare set. It's the one that they give you when you when you hit seventy and do like the challenges and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, the weapon that increases your shark room damage and the uh, bombardier's rucksack, which none of this means anything to you, but I swear it's good stuff. And I have the belt that makes my companion animals take take less make me take less damage i have a marauders yeah that's the name of the build so i mean i'm running marauders right now i am uh switching to the set that has uh like hell walkers and uh it's called like the unholy set i think okay. but i have that and i have the uh the ancient legendary bow for multi-shot and i also have like a what GR am I up to? I think 405 or 406. Oh, no. Uh, I am, no I've, I've only soloed a 60 so far. I can solo Greater Rift 60s. I could probably go higher than that, but um, I'm a baby. <laughs> and I'm scared, man. I need someone to hold me. So anyways, I've been playing Diablo. It's a lot of fun. I feel like they did a really good job this season with adding all of the cosmetic rewards because mm -hmm. it makes me want to play more. Yeah. Because previously it was like once you got decent gear, I didn't really care to upgrade it to like better decent gear. It was like, okay, I'm geared enough, I'm good. But now oh, I'm perfect. actually really, really interested in like building a set that would be really good for like farming T10 so that I can like farm goblins and stuff. But So is that a game that you would recommend me getting back into? Because I played it... Um... I played it when I it wish came that out you would have bit. started playing on I'm sorry to interrupt you. I wish you would have started playing when the season came out on Friday because now it's like 
Like, I would play with you for sure, but I would probably level an alt because right now I would be really far ahead of you. But the Mm. seasonal stuff is really cool because it's, like, it resets everything and you have to start a new character and, like... Then you do, like, the seasonal journey, and there's, like, quests and different rewards. And now there's, like, all these different, like, cosmetic rewards, like, wings that you can get in-game oh, and, cool. like, pets. So, I don't know. Oh, it's gosh. it's really fun. Like, I would definitely play with you if you want to play. And I can, like, power level you in, like, 30 minutes. Oh, 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 oh. well. Not, like, just me. If I had a group of people, we could power level you in, like, five minutes because what? it's... Yeah, leveling isn't really the thing in seasons. It's, like... Mm-hmm. That's not really the the thing you're trying to do. It's once you get to max level doing the content from... I'm I'm so burpy. It's the goddamn couscous. It's that goddamn couscous. And then Overwatch, have you... Now, do you need a friend code? Have you played? I haven't gotten to play at all. What the hell? Someone in chat give Sarah your friend code. (laughs) I'm serious. Someone in chat tweet Sarah if you have a friend code and let her play. Because I already gave mine away, so I don't have one for you. But, like... Cheeb needs to play Overwatch, so someone please, I know out there in the 125 viewer land that we have, I know one of you guys has a friend code. Please give it to Sarah. Please give it to Cheeb. Go ahead. I, um, I, I've never played it before, but I really uh, have enjoyed Team Fortress in the past, and it kind of reminds me of that game, so I think that... I think I, I want to at least give it a try. I know that they opened the beta on the 5th, don't they? Well, Betty Ann said she has a friend code for you, so you can play today. What? (laughs) Betty Ann, girl. Girl. She's on our team. I'm 99% sure Betty Ann is on our team streaming for St. Jude. She is. She is. I know who Betty Ann is. I've been trying really hard to, like, follow everybody who's on our team and, like, keep track of when they're streaming and, like, retweet if I see them tweet that they're streaming. Which, if anybody in here watching right now is on Derp Squad, please tweet me if you're live. I will retweet you. So, anyways, so sweet, she said that she would give you a code so you could play tonight. You really oh. should. It's very, very fun. It's very fun. It was very fun and it's very addicting. And it definitely has TF things going on. So, uh, is it, how much is it when it comes out? Is it 60 or? I think it's $40 for the, oh. for the game without the skins. Or if you want okay. to pay 60 you get like a bunch of special skins with it. Okay, well, 40. I don't need no special skins. <laughs> I mean, it'd be cool, but... <laughs> well, the thing is, like, they're not really special anyways because, like, everybody has them. Like, I feel like the skins that you unlock in-game are more fun anyways because they're, like, random and you earned them mm-hmm. as opposed to, like, the Origins Edition skin, like, everybody has anyways. So I feel like once you got a different skin for that hero, you wouldn't use your Origins skin anyways. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, I did have a question, so... Okay. Uh, there's four classes, right? So are there 20, 21 different characters I think uh, I have? I, okay, class, it's really weird how they classify. They, okay. What is on my head? This is what beautiful is on hairstyle head? is what is oh. on my head. This is what I like to call the pink marge. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank I like you. It. Um, so the way that classes are classified in Overwatch is a little odd to me, actually, because they have offensive, defensive, support, and then, like, tank. But, like, a lot of the, those, a lot of the roles are really murky. You know what I mean? Like, there are defensive heroes that are really supporty, and there's support heroes that are really offensive, and there's Mm -hmm. defense heroes that are really offensive. The only ones that are pretty correct constantly are tanks. So I don't feel like it's as important as you would think it would be. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like it's as important as, like, oh, I always play offense. Like, I have a hero from every class that I like to play. Like, I like to play uh, Symmetra, who is considered a support. I like to play... I actually like to play all of the supports, to be honest, because they all play very differently. That's which I think is interesting, too. Like, Mm -hmm. um, there are AoE healers. There are single target healers. There are very offensive... Um, aggro type healers then there are supports that only shield they don't do any healing at all so it's like they're they play all very differently and then the defensive heroes i've lately really gotten to like torbjorn anybody who mm-hmm. uh who plays overwatch or has played overwatch uh he's like this little tiny short dwarf and he builds turrets and his backstory is very interesting he was like 
a brilliant inventor before this omnic crisis, but he was kind yeah. of a conspiracy theorist who like thought all robots were evil and like people shouldn't trust robots. And when the omnic crisis broke out, basically what happened was a bunch of the sentient robots were either reprogrammed to be turned against people or were smart enough where they evolved to turn against people. So that Ooh. was like what the world crisis was that Overwatch was formed for. And so yeah. he was, you know, he was recruited into Overwatch to build weapons to kill all these robots. So, so his is backstory really cool. is pretty cool. And he, uh, he has all these funny things that he says, and he's like a little dwarf, and he's got like a braided beard, and he says everything in like a Scottish accent. I saw him. He's he, fantastic. He looks cool. Build them up, break them down. <laughs> but, uh, and I also like to play, there's a big <clears throat> fat guy. His name's uh, Roadhog. All of their backstories are fantastic, by the way. Like, Blizzard, and I believe this. I'm going to say this right now in a public venue. I believe that Overwatch will be Blizzard's most successful game of all time. Really? Yes, I do. There awesome. are already, like, professional Team Fortress players that are moving over to Overwatch, and it's not even out yet. There are several mm -hmm. professional gaming teams that have already created Overwatch teams. I think it's going to be a big eSport. I think that it appeals to a very wide audience. The animations that they've done have been phenomenal. Then on top of it, you have so many complex backstories um, for each character. Somebody just in chat asked why Widowmaker's skin was blue. Widowmaker, and I, I read this after I did my reaction video to Widowmaker's animation. Uh, Widowmaker, her husband was in Overwatch, and I don't know if she was in Overwatch or if she was just like, you know, on the good guy side of the world. Okay. But she was kidnapped by Talon, who is a terrorist organization, and they oh. tortured her until she, they mentally broke her. And uh, the reason her skin is blue is because they slowed her heart down to as slow as it could possibly go oh without God. her dying, which is why her skin is blue, because her heart barely beats. And uh, it's also why she's such a ruthless killer, because she was tortured until she no longer had a shred of humanity. And she's also a sleeper agent. Um, so after they tortured her and broke her and reprogrammed her in the way that they wanted her to think, they allowed Overwatch to, to save her, to rescue mm -hmm. her, sent her back to her house, and she was fine for like two weeks. And then they uh, awoken her as her sleeper oh cell agent, God. and she killed her husband. Oh my gosh, who was here? Who was in Overwatch, and she's never been back to herself. I think her name was Emily or Amelie. I'm, she was French, so I'm sure I'm screwing that up. But uh, it's a really dark backstory, and uh, Reaper is going to have another great backstory, too. We haven't really found out much about Reaper. We know he is a mercenary who is one of the single worst terrorists in this universe's world he's awful he will oh. kill for anyone for any reason he doesn't care he's completely ruthless oh. but something is extremely wrong with him and he was actually part for a little while of black watch which was like the navy seals of overwatch you know like they were the special mm -hmm. elite forces of overwatch so at one point he wasn't just a good guy he was the best of the best good guy the best of the best. and the, the running theory of how he ended up the way he was how he went from you know a Commander Reyes to being a uh, Reaper is he was at there was there's a doctor in the game her mm -hmm. name's Mercy and she has she's brilliant she's a scientist and she's v a huge pacifist and she Ooh. felt like her life goal the only way she could possibly do anything to help this omnic crisis and what was going on was to be a doctor and to use the technology that she could create uh, mm -hmm. to help people. So she has like a weapon in the game, or not really a weapon, but uh, she has like a staff that she uses to he heal people, and there's actually Ooh. lore that she invented this. It's like a proton beam uh, projector that rapidly regenerates cells. She can also resurrect people, and there's lore behind that too, that she created this device that as long as she could get to the person within 10 seconds of death, she could regenerate them quick enough to revive them, like in the story, so, like she's this brilliant, brilliant scientist, brilliant, brilliant medical doctor. Well, Talon, she's from like Switzerland. Sorry, this is okay. there's a lot of details here. She's from Switzerland. Her main base of operations is in Switzerland. She was in Switzerland. This is before she had perfected her revival machine and before she had perfected did her proton beam machine okay. her and reaper were in her facility working on stuff and talon blew it up oh my gosh and after that accident reaper was barely human and the the theory is that 
he died and Talon used her not completed revival technology to revive mm-hmm. him but then he his life force depletes so he has to kill people to suck in their life force oh. in order to continue on that is fan theory we know the we know the explosion in Switzerland happened we do not know if Reaper was there but we know that is the that is the best that fans have like tied together of how Reaper went from this elite Navy SEAL esque badass hero, you know what I mean, to being to such, a bad guy. such a bad guy. And like, there's also some really interesting vocal interactions between the heroes. Like mm-hmm. Mercy, she speaks with a really thick kind of like German accent, and when she gets near him, she says, "What happened to you?" And he'll be like, "You tell me, Doc." Which kind of implies that it like she's responsible for it, and also yeah. anytime he kills anyone, if Mercy is nearby, he'll like their interaction is he says, "Remember, this is your fault." Oh my god! Aren't you so like I? You're not even into this game, right? And aren't you so interested in I'm knowing about these characters? Yes. Like the characters are all super, super, is super she interesting. The only medic that can revive people, yes. or can all medics? Nope, she's the only medic that can revive people. She is, like I said, in her backstory, she's a doctor and she's a scientist. And then there's another backstory that I really like, uh, Symmetra, who was mm. she is an, she's Indian, like from India, and she was brilliant from a super poor family and it was very much a type of world where poor people did not have opportunities oh kind of like america um (laughs) so it was very much a situation where if you don't have wealth you don't have opportunities to like get good education and she was absolutely brilliant so this big corporation whose name is i'm lost on it right now this huge corporation finds out that there's this just brilliant girl and they're an architecture company Mm-hmm. But it's really, really advanced architecture, and their best architects do this light bending thing where they basically bend light into a solid material okay. to, like, build buildings and stuff like that. It's very, very advanced technologically, and only the, like, smartest, brightest engineers can do it. And so they take her away from her family. She never sees her family again, and she is 100% absorbed in her studies, and she becomes, like, Aww. their best light architect that's ever been. But they're actually, like, a bad, they're not good guys. Oh, so, okay. fast forward 20 years, she's an adult now, and this corporation has bought out an enormous portion of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. Mm-hmm. Right? Is that right? Rio de Janeiro, Rio Grande? I don't know. Part of Brazil. And um, they have been basically doing all these crazy crackdowns on the citizens with really strict curfews and dress codes and things that you're allowed to say out loud and not allowed to say out loud, like a very totalitarian, not okay way for a government to treat people. And then any time that they get in trouble, they force them to work for them for free. So it's this very terrible situation. And there's a celebrity in Brazil whose name is Lucio. And he breaks into one of their facilities and steals one of these these light bending devices. Mm-hmm. And now he is with Overwatch with his main weapon is this stolen light bending device that can heal or damage or knock people away. It's like this crazy. Wow. So like it's really interesting because Symmetra is not really a bad guy, but she is 100% employed by bad guys. And mm-hmm. she, a lot of her interactions are saying like, you know, like, Uh, chaos is the mother of disorder and like basically blaming everybody who doesn't follow these crazy rules for this Mm -hmm. war that's going on because she's been brainwashed and then Lucio is fighting against that whole it's really interesting the whole backstories are super interesting and it sounds like it and it's it's so much more than just like uh here's a bunch of classes and they shoot each other yeah like that's the gameplay yes but like they put so much work and so much thought into every character and how those characters interact with each other and how their stories tie in together and where they were when this Omnic crisis occurred. And it's, I'm like kind of obsessed with it. So um, if you do the $40 version, do you get all of the characters? Yes, you get all of the characters. The characters will never be paid for. If they add more characters in the game, they will be free. If they add more maps into the game, they will be free. The only thing that you would ever have that were premium purchases is they may offer the option to, like, buy the crates that can contain skins and stuff. 
Ah, but they, okay. they if they said DLC will never be paid for. Although I wouldn't be surprised if they added like expansions that added, you know, maybe like ten characters and ten maps at a time, which wouldn't really be like your usual patch. But they said they've already yeah. planned uh, more heroes are are in development currently, and Jeff Kaplan said that there wouldn't be uh, any paid DLC uh, that would be relevant to gameplay in Overwatch. That's awesome. So yeah. I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. And, like, if you just go to the website and read all the stories, it was something I didn't realize was, like, a resource that was available to me, as silly as that sounds. But I started reading all the backstories, and I was, like, super obsessed with all of them because they give you just enough information that, like, you can see how, like, this character ties in with that character. And Mm -hmm. then when you're, like, playing in game and you hear their little vocal interactions, it makes you, like, wonder even more, particularly Reaper and Mercy. Like, I am – like, because they said they were going to release, I want to say, like, four – four more animations before the 24th and one of them already came out so that would be three more i know the last animation we're going to get is reaper i know it because like people want to know so badly what happened with reaper yeah so like i know that'll be the last one i heard that it was cross-platform it's not is it it is on multiple platforms but you cannot play like xbox has its own you know, community and PlayStation as its own little ecosystem and then okay. PC. There, I did read something somewhere that Xbox has has done some sort of uh, integration where they can play with PC games, but not for Overwatch, just for, like, other games. So mm-hmm. I don't know if in the future that functionality would be added, but it would be really difficult to balance with everybody using different controllers. And, like, yeah. of course, like, Xbox has some sort of auto-aim assist sort of thing. Mm-hmm. It's, so it's, like, it's just not, it's not really a fair idea to, like, intermingle those people. Yeah. Uh, but you should get it on PC, I'm just saying. I would definitely. I I don't know what it is, but with FPS games, I'm just. Uh oh. Let me mute it's this. Not sorry. Me. <laughs> with FPS games, I'm just better uh, with uh, keyboard and mouse than I am with controllers. I didn't so. used to be, but I definitely am now. And then it was funny because after playing uh, some PC shooters for a little while, I tried to play Halo and was garbage. Like, totally. Oh, no. It was really <laughs> sad for me. It was, like, very heartbreaking for me because you, you remember, like, I used to actually be nasty at Halo. Yes. I mean, I wasn't, like, professional level or anything, but I was pretty Wait. good at Halo Are back in the day. Are you talking about the time that you, you streamed it? Because I saw you, like, fly up in the air and, like, no scope kill somebody yeah, while they were flying up in the air, and I'm like, okay. damn! Yeah, but that was luck. I don't <laughs> I don't want to like, I don't want to like, I'm not going to in any way take credit for something. I, I mean, that was luck. It happened and it was cool, but I used to be extremely good at Halo. Like I was never a super strong sniper, but I was very strong with a BR. I consistently four shot people and I, my aim was I mean, I didn't even know what to do. Do I turn my sensitivity up? Do I turn my sensitivity down? Like, do I put the fucking controller down and back away from the console? Because, like, I was an embarrassment to my team. And, like, I was so sad about it because Halo was, like, the very first game I ever really was obsessed with. I I had a real problem with Halo in the mid-2000s. But that was ten years ago, man. Yeah, girl, I know those feels. I I was obsessed with Halo and Halo 2, and then when Halo 3 came out, it made me rage so hard that I ended up breaking two different controllers, and I was like, maybe I should just stop maybe playing I this game. <laughs> maybe I should take a break. Maybe I should take a break. Just to uh, add, somebody in chat said, uh, I'm pretty sure the co- words... I'm pretty sure, uh, Ursidon, that the comment section is actually broken on donations right now, which I know sounds really crappy. But as far as, like, for me and, like, following people on Twitter and stuff, I will be emailing people at, I don't know if it'll be the end of the event or maybe I have, like, a couple days off coming up, but I will be emailing people and getting their Twitter and stuff if it didn't happen. Or if you did donate and you just want to tell me what your name was in the donation on, on Twitter, I'll just follow you then. Uh, I'm not, I, 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 but I'm pretty sure the comment section is actually broken currently. I apologize. Not that it's my fault, but I apologize. But so basically, other than that, gaming wise, nothing's really going on. In real life, I had to postpone Tychus's training classes. He started advanced class and then I was going to miss uh, today. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and then, or no, I met yesterday because it's Monday. So I was going to miss yesterday because I was on freaking Vicodin. And then I have another stream on a Monday coming up. 
And then I had something else. So I was going to miss three out of eight classes. So I was like, well, that's a lot of classes to miss. Yeah. So I contacted them and I said, you know, I'll pay for it. Like, but I need to switch them to a different class because I, there's no point. I'm going to miss it. And they yeah. were super nice and they actually didn't charge me. They just said they would put me in a new class in June, which I was shocked and they didn't have that's to do that. That's awesome. So he's going to start a different class in June. And uh, then I also have ADHD, <laughs> which we were talking about earlier, but I have been officially diagnosed as having uh, life impacting ADHD and I'm on medication now and I think it's better. I don't know, maybe it's not. I don't. I certainly don't think I was worried my personality would change and I would be like doped up or something, but I don't yeah. feel that way at all. Yeah. Like I just feel like I'm slightly more focused, focused. and I'm, I'm able to stay on track a little better. And if I do go off track, I can come back to where I was, whereas before mm. I would just lose it. Um, and I feel like I'm a little more conscious of other people talking. Also, since we're talking about that, Sarah, what did you tell me before we started filming today about how you were feeling? You were like, oh, I'm <laughs> super tired, so if I'm not talking a lot. Oh, yes, that's right. Um, I, I would like, just just so you guys know, I am super tired. I mean, I woke up at, oh goodness like six in the morning because of abigail i've barely had any sleep whatsoever so if i am quiet it's my fault <laughs> okay <laughs> please do not send danielle any messages being like you're bullying her into not talking no it's me guys i'm pregnant i'm exhausted i have an 18 month old child <laughs> who keeps me up at night because she's teething okay 100 percent quiet on on my my part so Thank you for keeping it so entertaining. Boo. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I like. I just don't want to like force Cheeb to talk, and I'm trying super hard to like be more conscious of not interrupting people. It's been a lifelong problem of mine. I don't know why. Uh, probably the ADHD. That's <laughs> <That's right. laughs> it's, it was funny because when I was talking to the doctor, I said, you know, I've I've dealt with a lot of coping mechanisms for school and work. Like it's not like I'm struggling to get my work done or struggling to get my school done. I am struggling in social situations. Like people talk to me. And this happened in my this has happened in my guild multiple times. If a mm. bunch of people are talking all at once, I can't listen to that. I completely yeah. tune out and I straight up lose time. Like I don't. I'll be like, oh. where did the last five minutes go? Because I heard nothing. <laughs> I saw nothing. I was, like, daydreaming. And, like, it's even the same thing in, like, some situations of, like, uh, conversation. Like, people think I'm being rude. And what's odd about it is that, you know, and I don't know how it's going to change being on medication. But if yeah. I was not honestly, like, talking actively during a conversation, like, you know, yup and ha huh, and, like, uh, thinking about, like, how I was going to respond to things, I wasn't listening. <laughs> Yeah, that I had two modes. I'm not listening to you. I'm interrupting you because I, I can't stay on task if I have to sit still and be quiet. But I, I think it's gotten better. But you're super tired today, so I can't test it out. Yeah, I'm sorry, boo. <laughs> the first thing that I pretty much told her was like, just by the way, I'm exhausted. And then I showed her my big ass coffee mug. So if y'all have seen me drinking this the entire time, that's why I'm yeah. so tired. You're always tired anyways. <laughs> like, even I if, am. I swear, even if you weren't pregnant just having an 18 month old baby would make you tired yes i'm tired and i just have a dog <laughs> it's so exhausting boo well, why you want to talk about that a little bit when is when's this baby happening well it's supposed to be on the 20th uh hopefully she does not come any sooner than that because i want to make sure that i can at least stream for uh St. Jude for the the first two weeks of the month because I know I'm not going to be able to at the the end of the month. I don't know how long they're going to keep me in the hospital or if there's going to be any complications with the baby because you know that type of stuff can happen. Yeah. But um, so hopefully she stays on point. <laughs> but uh, it it is man, it's difficult having a 18 month old child and being pregnant. It's just like feels. Like, you have no energy whatsoever. <laughs> I don't know those feels, but I empathize with you. Thank you, boo. <laughs> um, what about Abby's birthday? That's coming up, isn't it? Uh, well, actually, it's it's pretty far away, but I'm excited to announce if anybody in the chat is going to go to TwitchCon. I'm going to TwitchCon as oh, well. Oh, that's exciting! 
Um, I my community is just so absolutely amazing on Twitch. If you guys don't know, I stream full time. Um, and a while ago, I think it was about a month ago, we set a goal to go to TwitchCon slash have Abigail's special uh, San Diego adventure birthday party. And we not only met our goal, but we exceeded it. And um, so I'm definitely going to get to go to TwitchCon with Abigail and Joel. And uh, then afterwards, October 3rd is actually her birthday, so we're going to be going to the zoo. She's oh. been learning all the anima animals, boo. That's so fun. So, Wait, you're bringing her to the convention? Yeah. Do you think she's going to be good for that? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Uh, the The weird thing is, is that my child is a perfect angel in public. <laughs> and <laughs> she's really a cranky little brat when we're just inside. Like, when there's nobody else around, she's a little brat, but... Out in the public, she's like, oh, there's people here. I better behave. <laughs> <laughs> I need to impress them with my yeah. manners. So uh, I think she'll be good. And if not, um, I can always... Joel's parents is actually... We're doing a family trip down there. Oh. We're, yeah, we're going to drive. So we're going to stop at, like, the Grand Canyon on the way and, like, do a bunch of, like... Oh, my God. Tiny, tiny uh, trips. And um, oh so God. she's bad. I can always leave her with them, but... <laughs> So, if you're going to TwitchCon, definitely look I for I don't know. Me. Like, I don't know. I wasn't planning on going. <gasps> if you do come, you could come to Abigail's birthday and hang out with me and just all the things. I, I mean, know, I know. so many things because I'm definitely going to uh, PAX Prime first time ever. Ooh, I'm definitely exciting. going to PAX Prime, um, which is like, I want to say end of August. And okay. then BlizzCon is going to be in the beginning of November. Oh, So good. it's like there's just a lot going on. Yeah. This always happens to me, though. It never... <laughs> Wait, is PAX Prime the one that's in Washington? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, my goodness. This would be exciting then. Because um, there's... I'm not sure if he's here. But uh, there's a, a regular that is like my MVP of both me and Melissa's uh, Twitch channels. He's incredibly generous. If you ever see his name, is, it's uh, Icrillum. Mm -hmm. And he is just such a generous guy, like the most altru altruistic person I've ever met. He gives so much to everybody. Even in my chat, he'll just sometimes come in and be like, I'm going to give away this key to all these games and stuff. And he's just... Such an amazing guy. Anyways, uh, me and Melissa were streaming uh, a couple days ago, and um, we had mentioned that we've been friends for like five years, and we've never met. And he was like, well, guess what? I'm going to fund a trip for the two of you to meet each other. <laughs> and um, Where are I you going? Are you going to Pax Prime? Pax no! Prime was no! No! What? <laughs> no! Wait, you and Andy Vade are both going to Pax Prime? If if everything follows through, we uh, that because he asked us when we wanted to meet and how long we wanted Stop to meet it. for. Stop it! And um, no, yeah. What? So we were. I don't know if if it goes through Pax Prime, man. No, be so exciting. Oh my god. <laughs> um, Are you serious? But, Yes. This is my first time learning this, guys. <laughs> I mean, so not only would I get to see uh, my boo, Melissa, but I get to see my boo, Danielle. Oh, my God. We'd be like the three musketeers. There'd be so much trouble about. <laughs> but but we'll see. Like, I don't want to, you know. Um, oh, my God. I don't want to say too much because it's like we're still talking to him oh about God. it. I don't want him to, like, have to. Oh, my God. You know, no, he has to. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> he's just uh, he, if you're here man I'm, I can't see the chat because I put it down just in case Game of Thrones spoilers <laughs> but if you're here Acrylum, uh thank you so much for even suggesting that man and hopefully wow. we can get everything wow. set up wow 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 I have a lot of feelings right now <laughs> um, okay so are you moving well see that was another thing is that uh, I, I'm not going to be able to move for at least two years and the place that I was thinking about moving was to Washington why so it because um it has everything that it would ever want uh, it has that's a weird beach. because I'm in New York <laughs> oh boo <laughs> come move to Washington I'm not me. gonna do that why because I have a beautiful house with an apple tree and deer in my backyard 
That's true, guys. She posts pictures of her beautiful backyard and these deers all the time. I'm like, oh, it's so beautiful. Like there. the old lady next door to me is going to die any day now. Just move into her house and be my next door neighbor. <laughs> Just let me know when she dies off. <laughs> she there. also has an apple tree and our yards would connect. <laughs> it would be the best. It would be the best. Though I feel like my dogs would harass your dog. I would just dogs. not let them all out at the same time. I don't think that's true. I think Tychus has actually gotten significantly. I'm not saying he loves other dogs or anything, but I mean, we did eight weeks of obedience with nine other dogs. Wow. And like he, I mean, he still didn't like it when they got like in his face and stuff, but <laughs> like he wasn't like at the end of the leash actively trying to murder anybody. Like he was <laughs> fine. It took oh. him a little while to calm down, but, like, he did calm down. So, I don't know. I don't... I'm not worried about okay. your dogs. I'm worried about mine. Oh. <laughs> a Duncan is, like, the sweetest dog in the entire world. Like, I could take him anywhere. I'm not afraid to take him anywhere. He will be friends with every dog, every person that he meets. But Lulu is very protective. Well, of... yeah, she's a herding dog. So, um... That. She she's very protective, so I always it's my fault. I feel a I feel anxious, so um, I'm sending her this anxious energy, and she's receiving it and be like, stay away from my mom. You know what I mean? So <laughs> it's my fault, really. Well, it doesn't help. I mean, the dog is like half neurotic and the other half also neurotic. Yes. <laughs> she's what, isn't neurotic. she like border collie and cattle dog or something? Well, See, that's what they told me, uh, but I'm starting to think she's part pit bull uh, instead because they told me she was border collie and blue healer, which is two types of herding dog. But she's not I'm, fluffy though. She's not fluffy enough to be yeah. blue healer and she's but like not, she's probably just a run of the mill mud. I don't mean to sound like that, but like I, she's, she's probably got a lot of things in her. She's got like a wider face and she's like muscle upon muscle. So I'm trying to think of breeds that are very muscular with wider faces. Yeah. Could be like a Labrador, maybe, yeah, or... she could have a little pit in her, but that wouldn't really make her... Like, honestly, it would be more likely that you'd have a Border Collie that would be that kind of neurotic protector. Yeah. Like, pit bulls are usually like, hi! <laughs> <laughs> like, happy-go-lucky. Yeah, if it was, like, another dog, maybe, like, because, like, pit bulls have to definitely be socialized or else they're mm -hmm. not good with other dogs. Although, ironically, of all of the dogs I've ever had in my life... My purebred pit bull, who was rescued from a drug raid, is by far the best with all other animals <laughs> and people. She's so Violet's adorable. Violet's the best. I, I wish she was up here right now because she just is hilariously the best. Like, when we go to, like, the vet, Violet just literally wants to say hi to all the other dogs. And she's so friendly. And she'll immediately get down on her belly to make sure they know that she's, like, small Aww. and not threatening. Like, I don't understand how such a mentally adjusted dog came from such a bad situation that I've had Tiger since he was a puppy and he's a maniac. <laughs> he's a little turd. Like, I can't have a kid. I clearly can't even raise a dog. Oh no. You did a great job with a Violet. Yeah, but she came like that. She was like four when I got her. <laughs> I got what I got. Like, I was lucky with Violet, honestly. I mean, I didn't, <sighs> honestly, I did not do a lot of, like, anything like violet has been like the easiest dog i've ever had like Aww. violet doesn't care if you go for walks violet doesn't care if you pet her 24 7 like violet is just the chillest dog and she's just happy in all situations she loves all people she loves all other animals like i have literally seen her like watch squirrels peacefully like she does not care she just likes everybody and everything and like she'll bark when someone comes to the door until she sees them and it doesn't matter who they are if she sees that you're a person she knows you have hands and they could be used to pet her <laughs> like she, she could get some pets she doesn't she would she would definitely lead a burglar and here's the tv and here's yes. the treats <laughs> and here's the refrigerator. Mom keeps cheese in there. Uh, her and Duncan would get along so well. Um, she Okay, so the person who said drug dealers aren't necessarily bad dog owners, while I would agree with you normally, Violet was not taken care of. Violet did not, uh, had never been outside before, ever. Wow. I, uh, she, I lived in an apartment that was on the second floor, and it took me three days to teach her to go up the stairs. 
because she didn't know how to go up and down stairs. It's so sad. And she, like, didn't understand. Grass was very confusing to her. And, and she didn't touch a toy for, like, two years because she didn't know what we were trying to accomplish by giving them to her. <laughs> like, what is this thing? She, like, didn't get it at all. I mean, she knew some, like, really basic commands, and but she had very bad teeth. She's probably younger than I think she is. Like, I, I say now that she's about 13. I got her in August of 2007, and they told me she was four. Mm -hmm. Which would make her in the realm of, like, 13 now. But, like, she could have been, like, one or two with very yeah. bad teeth. But she also wasn't spayed, had had a few litters of puppies. Just Aww. she wasn't very well taken care of at all. There were, like, 11 or 12 dogs when she got seized. And I'm pretty sure there was only two of those that got adopted out. Oh my goodness. Because That's they so just weren't, sad. it's not safe. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, yeah. but in the same sense, like, when you talk about, especially pit bulls in general, the media is so quick to, to, to blame. Mm -hmm. And, like, a part of that is just honestly that they're very strong and they often have very bad owners. Like, that's, like, I read a story the other day about um, a three day old baby that got killed by a pit bull. <gasps> oh my goodness. But why on earth would you be laying on a bed with a three day old baby and any dog? So the the mother or father was on the bed as well. Yeah, apparently the dog was sleeping on like uh -huh. the mom's leg and she sneezed, woke the dog up and scared him. <gasps> and he was very very close to the baby and redirected and he bit her once and let go. Oh, it wasn't like he picked her goodness. up and shook her or anything like that. He got super scared, redirected and bit her once, but like to me why would you let a three-day-old baby that close to a sleeping dog of any breed? I, I don't would care not. if it was a chihuahua. You just don't mm -hmm. do that because it's an animal and it's not responsible. And then when you bring a pit bull into it, if a mistake happens with a chihuahua, no one's going to die. But it's true. Like, if a, if a pit bull bites you once, like, it could be very bad. And yeah. that's because they're very large, strong, powerful dogs. And have, it's not but... it's not really a temperament issue. It's, it's an irresponsible owner issue. I heard another story recently about a three-year-old that got killed by a, a pit bull. Who knows what, if it was. But the, the kids were home alone. It was a three-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a ten-year-old home alone. Yeah. And they fed the dog. They were in. They were three little kids feeding a fucking 80-pound pit bull. And why? Why were they home alone? Number one, why were they home alone? Like a ten-year-old is not old enough to care for a three-year-old. Number two, why are they near dog's food? Like, yeah. there's just so many parts of the stories. And every time I read stories about little kids getting, like, mauled by dogs, like, there's always just this part of me that's like, why was this child, like, in, why? Like, why? Yeah. You don't just, you don't just let a little kid walk around with a dog. It's just yeah. not safe. It's just, it doesn't matter what kind of dog it is, and it doesn't matter how much you trust the dog. Yeah. Like, Violet, when I first got Violet, I didn't allow anyone around Violet unsupervised. Mm -hmm. And Violet was the nicest dog ever. Violet had never done anything to make me believe that she was going to hurt anybody. But I had a very strict rule that if I wasn't in the room, Violet was in her kennel. Because I yeah. didn't know her well enough, and I had only had her you know, less than a couple years. I, I stopped doing that after I'd had her for about two years because it was very yeah. clear that she was fine <laughs> with <laughs> everybody. But, like, I mean, and you don't know the, 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 the interaction that goes on in a dog's head when they see a baby or a child. That's not the same thing as a grown person, yeah. and it's just... Duncan is, uh, like I said, one of the nicest dogs possible, but I... Do not let Abigail around them unsupervised because you don't know what's going to happen. And when I feed them, I put them in their kennels because I don't know if she could, like, go put her hands in yeah. there and they're just going to take it wrong and then they're going to bite her. I mean, you just don't know. I, you just don't know. So why take the risk? You know what I mean? Like... I, I don't understand it. Yeah, it's it's very sad because a lot of people are very quick to blame the breed. And, like, yes, the I, the fact that the dog is very strong and very powerful is definitely a factor in the situation. But mm -hmm. the bigger issue is that if you go on Craigslist and you look at free-to-a-good-home puppy ads, they're pit bulls, all of them. Yeah. So it's, like, extremely easy to get this type of dog, which means that the type of people getting them are not always. Obviously, this is, like, I'm, this is a blanket statement that doesn't apply to everybody, clearly. But, yeah. like, a lot of these people are not thinking about, oh, I'm going to get this dog neutered, and I'm going to get this job at dog at shots, and I'm going to take mm -hmm. this dog to obedience classes. And I'm going to, like, a dog like a pit bull needs to be walked every day. Not mm -hmm. every day, but sometimes it's raining, and I don't feel like it, and I'm tired. Like, no, when Stanley was a young dog, Stanley went for a walk every day until he was probably four years old. 
Aww. when he like chilled out a lot. But like you have a dog like that, they need to be exercised, they, they need to be need trained, it. and it's mm-hmm. not an option. It's not like oh, it's the nicest dog in the entire world, and I play fetch with him. Like no, you have to have a very uh, there's no, there's nothing innately wrong with having a dog like a pit bull. But if you are not prepared for the responsibility, it is a bigger responsibility than a dog like a like a. You're sh- well, Ch- Tychus is a bad example, yeah. but, <laughs> you know, like a golden retriever or, you know, some sort of mastiff yeah. that's very lazy or Great Dane Basically, is very lazy. You um, should never get a pit bull and just chain it in your backyard. Oh, my God. <laughs> don't even get me started you... on that. You should never get yes. any dog and chain it in your backyard. Like, if you think that's a way to take care of a dog, like, just don't get a fucking that's, dog. That's not Because that's not it. mentally healthy for any animal. We're going to move on. I always get very, very tilted about dogs on this stream, and I don't know why that is. I actually, <laughs> for the record, I love dogs i think that's why i get so passionately upset about it because i worked at a humane society for almost four years and i saw just way way too many irresponsible pet owners and it it's not about irresponsible like oh they didn't get their shots on time or oh they didn't give them heartworm medication i really don't care like if you're feeding your dog it's so much more about like are you meeting your dog's basic um, emotional needs like I, it's so sad for me that, that there are people that just, they don't, they do not take care of their dogs the way their dogs are needed. And, like, I, I'm admittedly not the best pet owner in the entire world. Tychus should probably be walked more than he is. I try to walk him, like, at least every other day, but it doesn't always yeah. happen. I mean, he hasn't been for a walk in, like, a week. He's very, yeah. I was just looking for him, but he's downstairs. But, you know, it's like, it's just, I feel like people get dogs on a whim and they don't realize the responsibility is is, and it makes me so upset because I worked at a humane society and so many dogs get put to sleep. And I don't want to, like, say, oh, go out and adopt a rescue dog to every person because that comes with its own set of challenges as well. Yeah. I just feel like, in general, when you get a pet, you need to understand what a responsibility is. is. It's not just about cuddling them and giving them a name and dressing them up. It's 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 well, a real responsibility. I'm about to call, like, the Humane Society on the people next door to me because they got this uh, dog, like... Isn't it a boxer? Do I remember this story. Is it the <sighs> same dog? No, it's not the same dog. Oh, Those good. They have a new dog away. now. Oh, um, they moved. Oh, new, they moved away. New, it's, s- new house, same scumbags. <laughs> got it. It's uh, the people right next to me. They got a dog not too long ago. And you know those dog runs where it's like a fenced in and they can run back and forth? Well, they got one of those. Very small. Oh, my God. Those are not. Those a, are for like yeah. people. Oh. And um, a carrier, you know, the the kind that you take your dog to the vet in, a very small carrier. And they got this puppy and he literally spends all day outside. It's It rained three days in a row. Call and the cops. I'm just, I'm Don't call it. the Humane like, Society. Call the cops. I'm, I'm so ready to. Call the cops. I'm just worried I don't know. I'm some- a complete and total shit lord. Like, I have... I have 100% taken dogs from people's yards before. When I worked at the Humane Society, like, there was more than one time where I knew about people who, like, just left their dog chained up all day, all night. Just the dog lived outside. It's terrible. Funny how that dog turned up as a stray. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. And you know what's worse? Those people don't fucking come and claim their dogs anyways. Because they don't Like, that happened to me on three different occasions that, like... I was involved in dogs accidentally becoming strays may and ending or may up not in the really loving families. <laughs> and like, I don't know. I, 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 if you call the cops and nothing happens, like, I don't know, man. I, I can't give you advice from here because any advice I give you would not be legal. <laughs> uh, these, these are all just. Uh, does your, she- does your humane society have um, like a police officer on staff? I'm not. I've some never do, actually some been do. there before. Do you have a county humane society or a city humane society? I'm pretty sure it's city. I live in a very small city, so it's probably city. Uh, well, if it's city, they probably don't have a humane investigator. It might be worth calling, find like whatever county you're in. Uh, see if like Google and see if there's a county humane society because they'll usually have an actual humane investigator on staff who is a police officer oh, who wow. would have the authority to take the dog. Whereas like somebody from the humane society like can't just take the dog. Like yeah. I mean I did it. Don't get me wrong. When I worked at the humane society, and people called me and said my neighbor's leaving their dog outside twenty four seven and. I would drive by and they'd be outside with no food, no water, no shelter. Like, oops, I found Whoopsie. this dog walking down South James Street. What happened? I don't know. But, like, I, I don't know. If if you can't, like, calling the local Humane Society might not help you out. You either need to call the police or a county Humane Society where there's a police officer on staff. Because otherwise they won't have the authority to do anything. 
Yeah. It's really sad. I just don't know why you would get a puppy to leave it outside. I don't, I, I don't get it either. I really don't. Like, it's I like don't people just think that. that dogs are meant to be a guard or something. <laughs> like, most dogs they are need terrible love and exercise record, and... Like, you, know, you would have to have a very mentally unbalanced dog for it to actually be a guard dog. Like, <laughs> like most dogs, that is not in a dog's nature to just, like, vicious. I guess maybe very specific dogs. Like, I know Rottweilers are bred to be, like, a one-person guard-type dog. But you need a very specific dog. And, again, that would be very specific, intense training. You can't, like, you can't just expect a dog to not attack you and attack everybody else. Like, that's not yeah. how it works, buddy. <laughs> But anyways, we got to get going because I read here in fucking oh. half an hour. Um, so we got some questions from Twitter. Uh, the first one is from Donnie Crowbeard. And it is, what was the defining moment when you said to yourself, I am going to be a streamer? Oh. Uh, so, so you want to answer that first? Well, I'm not really <laughs> a streamer. So I would answer this from a YouTube perspective because, you know, I had a... But I definitely had a defining moment of I'm going to be a full-time YouTuber, and it happened about two years before I could be. Uh, I was working at, oh, it was in between. It was after I was on the tester, mm -hmm. but before I was on King of the Nerds. When I went on the tester, they, they, they fired me. <laughs> like, they, I said I needed, like, two weeks off, but I worked at, like, a... A restaurant like they're like well, yeah that's great we, we need someone to work <laughs> so yeah. I didn't have a job when I came home from that and I tried for about a month to do YouTube full-time and what's funny is that like my view count has not increased significantly since then it's just the way you make money on YouTube is different mm -hmm. than it was six years ago so uh, I really tried hard. I was putting out videos like every day, like super Aww. hard videos. Not like, oh, I just filmed this vlog and we're just talking. Yeah. Like, I mean, like researched, written out, working 8, 10, 12 hours a day. Wow. Um, and I didn't, I was only making ad rev. So even then I was making five or 600 bucks a month. It wasn't enough. And uh, so I got a job and I was working at, uh, oh man, I was working at, I don't remember, but I was working somewhere for a while, and then I got the job at the game store, and then um, when I got the job at the game store is when I started making enough money on YouTube, because this was, this was like the peak of YouTube ad rev, mm -hmm. in like 2011 was when you, people were signed with Machinima, and they were actually making $2 per thousand views, and there was no such thing as monetized views, you just straight yeah. up got paid $2 per thousand of your view count, which was pretty decent money. So for a while, I was just doing Machinima ad rev, and I was still working full-time at the game store, and I was making good money because I essentially had two full-time jobs. And then the game store closed, or was it was on the cusp of closing, yeah. so I left, and I haven't worked since then. But when I really had this moment of epiphany of this is what I want to do was a couple of years before I actually was capable of doing it. But I never stopped. I feel like I was still very steady with my content and mm -hmm. analyzing the analytics. And the business side of YouTube has always been very interesting to me. What about you? It's funny. I've been telling Sarah to be a streamer for fucking like five years. She has. She really has. Because... <laughs> um I would complain about YouTube all the time. Yeah. I'd be like, I really enjoy doing YouTube, but it's just like, and if you guys start up your own YouTube channel, it really is, especially now, hard to like get your, your content seen. So you spend all this time working on it, recording it, rendering it, editing it, um, and uploading it. And then, you That's know, you get like, now. That's still a fucking problem. What? people not seeing videos that you upload yeah that's what, especially now and so i would get so frustrated and she'd be like you should just do twitch you got one of them personalities <laughs> you can just do twitch and i'm like uh, i'm not so sure but um i basically just i got i got fed up with uh youtube and i think it was last year when we did um our St. Jude stuff. Yeah. I started streaming to help the children and I realized how much I really enjoyed streaming and just hanging out with everyone and actually having a conversation because on YouTube, when you create something, you have to wait for someone to comment on it. First of all, see it if they even do comment on it and then you can respond and wait for their comment again. So it's not really like a, it's, it's not a conversation. Yeah. And uh, that's what I love about 
Twitch so much is that uh, it may be a little delayed, but uh, we can still kind of have a conversation in, yeah. in the chat window. And um, I guess, so I guess it was yes, uh, yesterday. Last it year. was yesterday. 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 <laughs> I woke up. <laughs> yes, it was last year, actually, thanks to Danielle. So if you guys enjoy my streams, you can thank her. I for... have been, I'm sorry, I just interrupted you. No, no, go ahead. I please. have been begging Sarah to do Twitch for so long. <laughs> like, because the thing is, like, I I feel like I have no qualms about doing sponsorships. Like, because I feel like I put out enough content that, like, it's not all sponsored. And, like, I'm very open about sponsored videos. And really, that's the only way you can make a decent living on YouTube is if you're willing to do promotional videos. And if you're lucky enough to have enough companies approaching you that you can be picky about who you're sp sponsoring and who you're promoting and whatnot. But uh, Sarah was always like, I don't want to make a video about this. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't really like doing this very much. And I used to always try to like involve her in sponsored stuff and it just was clearly not something that you were comfortable with yeah. and I was like Sarah you should really just do Twitch like people make a, a good living on Twitch and you have such a generous audience and like you have you really are like friends with your viewers and this is like exactly what you would like and instead of sitting here and picking your brain about how you can change and how you can compete and how you can literally grow tenfold like you could be with your community of people that you have right now and a little bit of growth would make a lot more difference than it would on YouTube because gaining a hundred subscribers on YouTube is a drop in the bucket unfortunately that's yeah. just with the way YouTube is monetarily like realistically you make yeah, I mean it depends on the month but like it's like, because about 60% of your views are going to be ad block. So you really yeah. only get paid for about one in three views. Wow. And then on top of only getting paid for one in three views, it depends on what ads are, you know, in on your videos. Ad mm -hmm. rev is nothing. Like, ad rev is like, I'm not kidding, maybe 10% of my monthly income on average, depending on, like, what's going on. So it's like, you can't live on ad rev. And if you have a small channel, like... It's so difficult to grow enough to get to the point where you could ever yeah. make enough money and be competitive because YouTube is so oversaturated. And mm -hmm. Sarah had such a fantastic audience that was so generous yeah. and so willing to, like, follow and her wherever she went and, like, help out in any way they could and buy what she's selling, you know. And I'm just so glad you did it because I feel like you've been so much happier since you've been doing Twitch over YouTube. I really, I do. I think that I have, and I, I know I am a smaller streamer. I mean, we don't even have over 5,000 people who follow our little Twitch channel, but I will go down fighting, say, saying that I have the best Twitch Oh, you TV. do. You have a fantastic Twitch community. Uh, everybody's just not only kind and generous towards me, but to each other. Mm -hmm. It's just like basically going and hanging out with a bunch of friends. So. Yeah. I truly am lucky to have so many amazing people in yeah. my life. But that's because <clears throat> you're such an amazing person that you, oh, wow. you attract amazing people. You're, you're like so one of those sweet. bug lights, only for <laughs> nice bugs. Uh, the next question that we have is what, uh, this is from uh, Buddy S. B. Buddy S. What methods do you use to stay motivated even though a project might be dragging on? Oh. I do not allow myself to play games until the project is done. That's honestly what I do. I do not allow myself to play any video games until the thing is done. <laughs> I'm not someone to ask that question to because I'm the biggest procrastinator in the world. Yeah, that's I, I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna argue with that one. Yeah. <laughs> Sheeb is generally doing derpcast notes, derpcast notes like five minutes before the show, yes. which is fine. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not judging. <laughs> but oh, I really am so I can't even answer that's why that. you're so good at doing twitch because you don't really have to be prepared <laughs> it's not a project you just show up um just show up and hang out <laughs> the next question is from the Rin Taryn it says what would you say is each other's best quality oh <laughs> I think your best quality is your infectious kindness Whoa. And you make everyone who talks to you feel like they are the center of your universe. Like, you oh, make me feel so special when I talk to you. And you, <laughs> I don't know, you're such a good listener. And you never, like, as someone who always, like, talks a lot, and it's, like, part of my personality that is very off-putting to a lot of people, you've never made me feel like I need to shut up or that what I'm saying is annoying. Like, you always treat me, like 
with just such a, a huge amount of respect and kindness and the way that you listen really just makes me feel like I am so important to you. Oh, you're so sweet. You're so sweet. <laughs> How am I even supposed to top that? You can tell me I have good hair. <laughs> First of all, you have the best hair ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, it makes me so bad because a lot of people, um, they just immediately judge you right away. And you truly do have one of the best personalities out of, I mean, we've been friends for very close friends for like five, six years. Yeah, it's been a long time. I've known you, you for a very long, probably long. I think it was like 2009 that I met you. Yeah. She has always been there for me. She truly is. I think so. The best quality about you is how loyal and caring you are. Mm -hmm. I think you have always been there for me, no matter what I've been going through. Um, you've always been kind to me. You've always, you've, there, there's, we've never been in a fight. I don't That's think. That's accurate. <laughs> I've never even been mad at you. Um, I've so, never even been mad at you. Uh, How can it, anybody be mad at you? <laughs> oh, believe me. What the fuck? You don't do it. No, one time you got mad at me over League of Legends. Oh, my God. Like, I will never forget it. Chief did not talk to me for, like, two days. We played League of Legends together, and uh, it was me and Nick and Chief and Joel and then a random person. And Chief and Joel were bottom lane. Terrible idea. Never put a couple in a lane together. Yes. And he was playing Support Amumu, and you were playing Heartseeker Vein. I remember this. It's, like, burned in my memory as the only time we ever got any sort of altercation. And Sarah is just tilted. I mean, from the moment she steps in a lane, she's fucking pissed off. Ah, oh, these minions. Ah, oh, these creeps. Oh, this fucking asshole. And after like five minutes of her just like raging at everything, she says, Oh, this fucking asshole won't let me farm. And I was like, Oh, so he's doing his job then? And Sarah was like, I am done. And like after that game, she's like, I have to go. And like, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's exactly what happened. I I don't know why I was so pissed off. I think it was because probably because Joel was playing support of Moo Moo. <laughs> I think I think it all revolved around Joel because I get like super protective over Joel. So if anybody like says anything bad about him, I'm just like. Um, and yeah, I and I was breaking his was. balls. I was breaking Joel's balls for playing support of Mumu. And then you came out and you were just like, oh, this guy won't let me farm. What an asshole. And I'm like, Sarah, he's doing his job. And you're like, and then we made up like this very like the very it was just so funny because she didn't talk to me like the whole afternoon. Like she was done with me. We were done. And then the next day she's like, Boo, you really hurt my feelings yesterday, but I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, too. I'm sorry I've reacted the way <laughs> Literally the only time, Chief, and I've ever been irritated with each other was, it was over a League of Legends game. Yeah. It was that asshole. He wouldn't let you farm. It was that asshole, man. Okay. You were just being witty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was, no, I was like just not whatever. Um, anyways, uh, if you want to submit episode questions for future things, words are hard. Use hashtag DerpCast QNA on Twitter, please, and we will try our best to answer them. We would like to send off today's video with Would You Rathers. Are you ready? These are pretty good ones. Oh, yeah. Would you rather live in the Game of Thrones universe or the Walking Dead universe? Oh, my gosh. The Walking Dead for sure. Why? The Game of Thrones is crazy. So? There's there's no fucks given in Game of Thrones. People die left and right, okay? People die left and right on the Walking Dead. <laughs> yeah, but, like, if you're in the top five, you're pretty, you're all right. Yeah, okay, you know? maybe if you met them in Atlanta, you'll be okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> No, I would definitely choose Game of Thrones. Okay, why? I could seduce my way to the top. Oh, yeah. Eyebrows. These are my seductive eyebrows, guys. Hmm. <laughs> Never do that again, um, Sarah. <laughs> would you rather take a large bite out of a still-living cow or eat a fully cooked human steak? Oh... How hungry am I? <laughs> I don't even know what 
but I would I I couldn't eat another person, but I wouldn't be able to eat a raw cow either. Well, it's not like, just a raw cow. I mean, you're taking a bite out of that shit while it's alive. You're getting fur, skin. It's gonna moo at you a lot. Uh, I mean, you're a Vander Holyfielding that shit. I guess I'd have to go with a human. Yeah, oh, I'd, I, I would I eat could not do too. that. I would like to think that the person was like okay with it. Like, I would eat person if well prepared and ethically sourced. I mean, I wouldn't <laughs> want like a murder person, right? But like, say like a nice, healthy, fit twenty year old just gets hit by a bus. And, and like, you know, in their will, they would just, like, maybe their bones to be cremated, but their meat to live on. So, I would you know, eat the person meat. Maybe Bobby Flay would cook it. <laughs> Bobby Flay. Um, I would eat a human person. So, it would have um, to be ethically sourced. It would have to be well cooked. I would eat a person. You know, sure. when you go to get your driver's license, they're like, do you want to be an organ donor? They'd be like, do you want to also give your meat to yeah. the hungry? I would give my meat to the hungry. <laughs> I mean, I don't fucking check. need it. I don't fucking, it's good meat. <laughs> Feed it to the dogs. I made a reference that just went over your head. What? I made a reference that you didn't get. Wait, what You'll you get it later. Me? You'll get it later. I can't say it again. Oh, okay. I said it's good meat. Feed it to the dogs. Oh. You don't get it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> You're not going to get it until you watch it. It's good meat. Feed. Oh, no, you did. That was from the first episode. That yeah. was from the first episode. It's good meat. Feed it to the dogs. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, like, I have it set up to donate all of my organs. Take all of them. Take every fucking piece of me that can help someone else if I'm dead. And that includes my meat. If you want to eat my meat after I'm dead, like, don't kill me to eat it. But, like, you can have it. I don't need it where I'm going. <laughs> Don't kill me to get my meat, like, but if I'm already dead, go don't, ahead. Yeah, like, don't kill me for my meat, but if, if we're on a desert island together and I perish before you, please, like, eat me. <laughs> like, I, I don't feel like it's going to be good meat. I'm awful lean and fatty simultaneously, <sighs> so I feel like it's not going to be fantastic, but, like, definitely, go ahead. You can have my meat. You can have my meat, too, boo. Would you rather burn? But only you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Would you rather burp confetti or fart glitter? In this scenario, the glitter would go through whatever clothing you wore. Uh, I'd rather burp confetti, I think. <laughs> what about you? I don't know. I was thinking fart glitter, but honestly, the burping confetti is hilarious. Glitter's but just farting so glitter is hilarious, too, because you'd be like a unicorn. <laughs> I was just thinking about how much I hate glitter and it sticks to everything and goes everywhere. But, like, honestly, if you farted glitter, like, the average person farts between 10 and 18 times every day. At that point, you could just cover yourself in glitter and it could be your thing. Just be a magical glitter person. And no one would know. (laughs) Who farts that much? Really? Every person in the world. On average, 10 to 18 times a day. I probably fart more than that. I take fiber supplements. There's something wrong with me because I don't fart that much. You just don't notice. I bet a lot of your farts are sleep farts. Maybe. Maybe Maybe you hold them all day. Maybe you're one of those people that has hilariously, like, comically loud sleep farts. Oh, my gosh. That would be. I say, I joke all the time, and when people ask me what I do for a living, I say, edit farts out of videos. But, like, that's not all a lie. Like, that's, that actually has to be done sometimes. One day you should just leave them in. Like, do a fart (laughs) compilation video? A fart reel. I'm pretty shameless about farting. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I will hush a silent room. I will hush mm-hmm. a room to silence to hear my farts. Is that true it's or happened. not true? It's yeah. true. Yep. And then she giggles about it. Yeah, I do. Farts are hilarious. <laughs> like, I'm not over it. Like, I am a child. I think farts are funny. Like, I, I, it doesn't matter who farts. I think it's funny. Farts are hilarious. And it's funnier if they smell. I agree. I'm sorry. Like, I'm a, I'm a small child. Farts I are funny. I agree with you. Would you rather be 4 foot 10 or 5 foot 10? Hmm. So it's either, like, asking, do you want to be super adorable height or, like, model height? Yeah. I think I'd rather be 4 foot 10. Just be, like, a pint-sized itty-bitty me. See, this is a dumb question for me because I'm 5'8 already. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so like, do you want to be slightly taller than you are now? Like, I I guess. I don't know. Sure. Like, sure. <laughs> why not? So I would probably pick the five ten because I would have to readjust to life at four foot ten. But I'm like I said, I'm already like five seven and a half, five eight. So like, 
With my hair, I'm pretty sure I'm six foot right now. <laughs> so yeah, win win. I'm I'm a pretty I'm pretty tall. So like I think I would pick the five ten, because who even cares at that point? It's true. But uh, on that note, this is the end of Derpcast. Oh yeah. Our next show will be Tuesday, June fifth at six p.m. Eastern, which is two days before my birthday. Oh. I turn old. <laughs> You, you t- what? I said I turn old. <laughs> I'm older than you, boo. Just a little. Just a tiny bit. I was born in 88. Were you born in 86? 85, oh. actually. Old. Mm, so old. <laughs> so old. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm sorry, stream. This is, like, pretty much pretty much Derpcast is just a conversation between me and Sheep where we occasionally acknowledge that people are watching it. <laughs> Yeah. When you started, I didn't even know. I'm sorry. I, you know, for the record, I did say we were going live, but yeah, um, I I'm just that derpy. That's okay. <laughs> that's what I love about you. All right, guys, we are going to go. Uh, I have a raid to do. I am going to go ahead and put myself on a in in between screen because I am going to continue streaming my raid here shortly. Um, so that's the plan currently. So if you want to stick around and watch some. <laughs> interesting content yeah. feel free to do so cheap is gonna leave yeah i'm gonna eat me some food she's gonna eat her some food and i'm gonna i think before we raid i'm gonna go change out of these pants because i'm wearing jeans what the fuck is that oh the devil's why? denim that's what that is <laughs> so i hope that you guys all have a wonderful day and a wonderful week month if we don't see you until next derpcast and I'm going to go ahead and get my stream set up for rating. And I will talk to you later, Chief. I love you. Bye. Bye. Bye.